Good morning, folks. This is going to be fun. We've got some very cool space science coming up today with Perseus, the tarantula, and a galactic tsunami of plasma. Let's get started with our star at spaceweathernews.com, and we find the last 24 hours were very much the same. We're starting to see more bright spots become common on the disk as yet another one becomes visible at the eastern limb this morning. We've still had no solar flares, but yesterday we looked at the solar wind intensification, and we rode the peak of that stream most of the day, are coming back off of it now. Geomagnetic conditions never became unstable again after being caught off guard at the initialization of the stream. Top geo notes located the top rumbles of the last day next to each other in Asia. Earthquake forecasters please note the OLR Delta class anomaly in the eastern part of the continent today as well. Meanwhile, I hope everyone is enjoying their warm temperatures because here in the Rockies, the snow is relentless. Shut down some major highways here yesterday, really hoping for a warm up soon. Okay, let's get out to space, and we're starting with two Tatooine-like planets. Each is orbiting a binary system, and there's something peculiar. They're noticing strange alignments between the circumbinary disk and protoplanetary disks, or rather lack thereof. Most notably, they're not following much of a pattern. The stars seem to be doing their own thing in towards the center of the system, without regard for the surrounding planets, which makes this different than most planetary systems we see. These binary stars, close in and with their motions, would look alien in the sky indeed. We're going up next to asteroid Bennu, and we've got the most detailed map of an asteroid in history. Folks, you may have heard that we have better maps of the Moon and Mars than we do of our own ocean floor. Now you can tag an asteroid on that list as well. Let's fly out to the Large Magellanic Cloud. We are skipping its macro scale beauty and diving right down into one of the most intense star forming regions in the local universe, the Tarantula Nebula. It's a classical example of a star gone nova and smaller stars forming from the remnant material left behind. They say that they are close to determining if the lone stars spotted there were alone when they formed or were ejected from more dense formation environments. If it is the first one, it violates the rule of how scientists think they would form and would imply greater action of the magnetic fields in those scenarios, sort of like Sophia has been telling us for two years. Up next, we are heading out to a massive cluster of galaxies, the Perseus Cluster. And folks, this is the gift that keeps on giving. From numerous point source studies to large scale wave activity in the most massive group members, Intimate modeling of system fields wrapped around it, collisions, effects, perturbations, plasma instabilities. But today, we are at Perseus for a completely different reason. If you pay attention to astrophysics and cosmology, you might have noticed that WIMP dark matter stories are quietly fading away in favor of axion dark matter. Now, we have long argued it is a better choice because it does have electric charge, but still, it's not real. It's imaginary. And it looks like the biggest test yet for those tiny particles has been scored. Fail. No axion signatures whatsoever in what is as significant of a search as most of the terrestrial particle detectors in existence combined. There are no wimps. There are no axions. There's no dark matter. There's just plasma, dust, and electric forces not yet accounted for. And last but not least, Folks, those purple lobes on either side of the Milky Way galaxy, the Fermi bubbles, blasting out the North and South Poles. This is the remnant of something, something tremendous. To get a better idea what that was, we need to find an extreme, ongoing example in deep space. And oh, do we have it. A quasar in deep space is seen sending shockwave plasma tsunamis throughout its galaxy. Now, this occurs as the bursting jets energize their outflows, but it also creates the waves that go through that galaxy. Now, while a quasar is an extreme example, it shouldn't be too hard to think of our own system in this way, just much more mature and slightly more tame. True enough, the flows in our galaxy are not yet dead, and would have to complement, if not produce, the same ripples in the galactic current sheet that we have been discussing. With a brightening of the Fermi bubbles, also being part of numerous catastrophe cave art examples. So in terms of a galactic superwave, one might expect or imagine that the lobes would brighten to signal the event. But even without it, the constant north-south activity is going to continually contribute to that Parker spiral wave within the system. Folks, we greatly appreciate your support. Those last two stories today make it hard to ignore both plasma cosmology and the Earth catastrophe cycle. 
both the large-scale physics and the sun and galaxy acting as the sword and hand are fully detailed in the playlist you have right below the video here on YouTube. Just scroll down, expand the description box to get more information. We've got your wind map forecast and shots of our start to close and of course we'll do this all again tomorrow right here but right now it's 4:20 a.m in the new valley of the sun eyes open no fear be safe everyone